It turned out that searching for a proof using search algorithms is more efficient than doing model checking by enumerating all possible truth values for uh, the propositions. So uh, the main reason is that, first of all, truth tables are exponentials of the number of propositions. And furthermore, when we do inference, we can simply ignore irrelevant information. So remember, for example, in R3, R3 was not needed to derive uh, any of the goals I wanted to check, or you know, for, for which I wanted to check entailments, right? So R3 was ignored altogether, and we don't need to um, use it uh, for inference. However, when you do the model checking, you have to consider all possible uh, propositions and all possible rules in your knowledge base. So the idea of inference is simply to repeat uh, inference rules until you reach the goal. Um, inference can be applied whenever you have, um, uh, whenever suitable premises are found in the knowledge base. So you keep going, apply inference rules just as we did in the previous example. So an important question is whether inference is sound and complete. So for soundness, uh, to check whether, whether the inference is sound, it's enough to check that it is sound at each step of the inference. So to use the inference, we're going to use the different proposition that we, uh, properties or proposition we have seen earlier. For example, if you want to use uh, modulus exponents, p and p implies q infers uh, q. Uh, this one uh, can be expressed as p and p implies q implies q. If you do the truth table of this proposition here, you'll find that it is a tautology, right? So you find it true no matter what p and q are, all right? So um, we have a sound inference rule that we are going to use over and over again along with other uh, rules such as the, implica the double implication or the bidirectional. So anything that's p equivalent to q, you'll find as p implies q and q implies p. You could also prove that this part implies this part is a tautology. So whenever you use a succession or an iteration of uh, inf sound inference rules, your process will be sound overall. So how about completeness? Completeness is actually trickier, and the reason is that for soundness, it's easy to show that all provable propositions by inference are true. This is because we are using a sound uh, rule each time, right? So we are only getting entailed formulas. However, for completeness, what we want to prove is that all true propositions out there are provable. So this is just you know, makes the, the, the knowledge representation larger. So we need to really make sure that all possible uh, entailed formulas are inferred by the system, which is more difficult to prove. In propositional logic, there are two ways to ensure completeness. One is called proof by resolution, in which we use a powerful inference rule called resolution rule. And the second one is called forward or backward chaining that use modulus exponents on a restricted form of propositions called horn clauses. So modulus exponent as is, uh, that looks like p, p implies q, infers q, actually uh, it implies that we are using a knowledge base that has an implication of positive literals. This is not always possible. If the knowledge base is expressed as an implication of positive literals, then it's true that modulus exponents is sound and complete. But if we can't express knowledge base as using you know, this, for this form, then it's not possible to have a complete system with modulus exponents. So uh, it's possible to use either resolution or uh, backward chaining on horn clauses to actually address the problem of completeness. So for resolution is actually one single inference rule that was invented by Robinson in 1965. Resolution plus search um, is, it turned out to be a complete and a sound inference algorithm. I will now illustrate the concept of resolution through the one plus word example. We are in a setting in which the agent was in 1, 1, went to 2, 1 to know that actually there is a breeze. The agent didn't want to move forward to either 3, 1 or 2, 2 because there is a risk that it's a pit. Uh, so it's a bottomless pit, so there is no risk to take here. The agent decided to then go back to 1, 1 and explore 1, 2. All right, to find that actually there is a stench but no breeze. All right, so we have the knowledge base initially. So the knowledge base will be equal to the previous knowledge, right? Union the new facts and these facts are first of all that there is a breeze in one into one right and then if there is a breeze into one we know that this means that um, there is either a pit in one one or a pit in two two or a pit in three one okay so this will come and enrich the knowledge base when the agent came back to one one and proceeded to one two it felt a stench, in, in which case, um, but no breeze. So there is no breeze in 
uh, the cell uh, 1, 2. <coughs> and we know that there is a Brisbane 2, 1. And we can also actually infer that there is no pit in 1, 3, nor 2, 2. And the reason is that if there was a pit here or here, then the agent would have felt a breeze here. So there is no uh, pit in uh, 2, 2, and there is no pit in 1, 3. All right? So this new fact will come in on which the, uh, the knowledge base. We also have the fact that um, uh, we, we got these uh, two elements here from the fact that if there is a breeze in uh, 1, 2, then this means that there is either a pit in 1, 3, or a pit in uh, 2, 2, or a pit in 1, 1. All right? So we're we have this new knowledge base now, and we want to know whether uh, we could infer from the knowledge base, or we could entail that actually uh, there is a pit in 3, 1 or not. So this is the question. And it turned out that actually there is a pit there. And uh, the agent will infer that through uh, some um, new inference called resolution. So the first thing to do is to look at what P31 actually appears. And you see that P31 appears in B21. So we have B21 if and only if, P11 or P22 or P31, which we can write as a double implication. So just to save space here, I'm going to start right away by writing it as an implication. B21 implies P11 or P22 or P31. And so I'm going to put an and in between. And P11 or P22 or P31 implies B21. OK? So this is the first step from uh, this element here. I actually inferred uh, this formula here by just splitting the bidirectional or the if and only if. From this formula, given that I have a conjunction, I'm going to pick one of the sides. And this one, I pick this one, B21, just strategically so as I could get rid of uh, the B21, because I know that um, in B21, um, B21 is true based on the new information from the knowledge base. B11 or P22 or P31, sorry, 31. And they have also that B21 is true here. From these two, by mod exponents, I can infer that I have, uh, so you have P, I have P implies Q, so they have P11 or P22 or P31. So there is a pit either in 11 or 22 or 31. OK, great. So now I know that actually <coughs> There is no pit in 2, 2, right? Uh, because if there was 1, I would have felt a breeze here. So from the fact that um, here uh, there is no pit in 2, 2, this is where a resolution will come um, uh, to work here. So we have actually there is no pit in 2, 2, and there is a pit in 2, 2 here, right? So these two will resolve with each other. This means that there is either a pit in 1, 1, in 2, 2, or, or, or in 3, 1, but there is no pit in 2, 2. So it must be either in 1, 1, or in 3, 1. So I'm going to make a nice inference here by resolution in which these two elements here will resolve. They resolve. And make a new element called the resolvent. And this resolvent is P11 or P31. Then from this information, I know that there is no pit in 1, 1. This is by definition the starting point of the, of the, the puzzle. So I know that there is no pit in 1, 1. I could apply again the resolution here between no pit in 1, 1 and pit in 1, 1. So the resolution here will bring me to um, the fact that actually pre three one P31 is actually a pit. Uh, in other words, there is a pit in 3, 1 just because this is the resolvent of these two entities here. If there is a pit in 1, 1 or P31 and it is not P11, then it must be 3, 1. So here I, I found, I made the entailment that KB actually is entailing that P31 is actually a pit. And um, actually, this is decided by the, the Wampus based on this uh, resolution uh, inference. We could do a similar work to find that actually there is a Wampus in, uh, in one, uh, one 3. Uh, so this resolution here happened at this stage here and at that stage here. And um, this element is called the resolvent. And this element also is called the resolvent of this two uh, proposition here. After this example, let's now talk uh, more uh, formally about resolution. Resolution is based on the concept of unit resolution in which we have an inference rule of the form L1 or L2 or Li or dot 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 or LK and the literal M resolve into uh, this formula here. So specifically, Li and M are called complementary literals, which means that one is the negation of the other one. So if we do the unit resolution, it means that we are going to get rid of the M and of the Li in the disjunction of the resolvent. So this two, in other words, 
um, these two elements here, the, the M and the Li in the middle here, will resolve to obtain the resolvent that actually is the disjunction of everything except the M and the Li, because Li and M are complementary literals. In other words, again, one is the negation of the other one. Examples we have seen just right now, uh, if we have the negation of P22 and we have P13 or P22, in other words, if there is a pit either in 13 or 22 and there is no pit in 22, then we have only one uh, possibility is that the pit is in 13. All right, so this is the principle of resolution in uh, general terms. We call a close a disjunction of literals, and a unit resolution is then applying a close to a close and to a literal to obtain a new close. So this is the idea of uh, resolution. We have to have a disjunction of literals, and we have to have a disjunction of literals along with one literal, in which this literal along with the complementary one in this close will resolve to obtain a new close. It is possible to generalize this unit resolution into a more general form in which we have uh, two um, uh, clauses. We have L1 or LK. We also have M1 or MN. And we have these two uh, uh, elements, LI and MJ, that are complementary literals. Right? If one of them is the negation of the other one, then we could resolve these two clauses to the clause that has a disjunction of all the literals except LI and MJ. This is powerful, but it applies only on clauses. And the question is now, can we express any proposition in propositional logic in terms of clauses? And the answer is yes. Every sentence in propositional logic is actually logically equivalent to a conjunction of clauses. This is powerful. And we call this form of representation the conjunctive normal form, or CNF, which is a conjunction of disjunction of literals, in other words, a conjunction of clauses. Here's an example of a conjunction of disjunction of literals in which we have the conjunction of what? Of this term on the left and this term on the right. So we have A or not P, that is a disjunction of literals, and this is a disjunction of the P and not C and or not T. All right? So uh, this is a, an example of a propositional logic form into a CNF. And the, good other, the other good news is that actually if we use resolution inf inference, this is a strong rule that actually get rid of all the complementary uh, elements or um, literals in the clauses, then uh, this uh, form of resolution is actually sound and complete and can be provable. All right, so it's possible to prove that we are not only using a sound inference rule, uh, because this makes sense. If you use the uh, proof by truth table of this kind of resolution, you find that it is sound, and applying this resolution over and over again uh, is sound. And it's also complete, and you can find the proof in uh, the book if you are interested about the completeness of uh, the proof by resolution.